Hi everyone! Today we're gonna do a little makeup tutorial. I'm headed out to Barnes & Noble in a little bit to get some else studying done, so I decided to just film what I was gonna do for that. So first of all, I have the Leaders uh, Hydrating Mask on, so that's a sheet mask. I usually like to do that before I put my makeup on, so I would do all my skincare and then put a sheet mask on for 15 minutes and then do my makeup um, so my makeup would be uh, would go on a lot better since my skin would be a lot more hydrated so it's been about 20 minutes now so I can remove it oh. love these sheet masks I'm usually not like a huge fan of um, cotton sheet masks um, but these ones are so good um, I usually don't start with foundation I start with the eyeshadow Let's see. So my top is black and silver, so that's what we're gonna be doing, like something like a little more cool tone. And since like I've got all the purple hair going on and stuff, so cool tone might be cute. So I'm using the Urban Decay Primer Potion. That's the uh, original one. So we're just gonna pat it on. And please excuse that weird pimple. I have on my brow. I have had that for like a month and it wouldn't go away. I don't know why. It just lives on my eyebrow. So today we are using one of my very favorite cool tone palettes so that's the Lorac Pro 2 um, I love the one um, as well but this one is more cool toned one has a lot more golds and bronzes so you can see it's very very well loved um, and we're gonna start off by like the lightest shade and we're just gonna pad that all over the lid so we're just gonna take like a Tarte brush or whatever and we're gonna go into the shade buff and we're just gonna pat that all over the lid to set the primer and to make it like one shade especially if you have like discoloration over your lids I don't really have that but like if you have a lot of discoloration or um like veins peeking through that's a really good step to do because then it like unifies the color over your lid and makes your eyeshadows look so much better Alrighty, now we've got that down. Mm -hmm. So now that we have that down, we're going to start going into the crease. And I still would recommend starting off with the light colors and then go into darker ones, like gradually. So I'm going to start with Nectar. And even though we're going with for a cool, tone, a cool, tone, cool toned look, um, I recommend starting with warm tones in the crease and then building up cool tones on top of it. Otherwise, you might end up looking like you've been punched in the eye or something. Um, so I would suggest going with like um, warm pinks or warm browns. So like this one, it's called light brown. So that would be a really good color in the crease. Or nectar. These are really good colors for the crease. And then you can start building up your grays or purples or whatever. So we're going to start with nectar. Nectar. I wish I had better lighting. The light keeps coming and going. And yes, I'm sitting on the staircase in my bedroom. Because why not? Because I have the best lighting in this like little corner of my room. So you keep building it up until like you're satisfied with how it looks. Um, most important thing is you have to make sure it evens out with your other eye though. So that's the other thing you have to worry about, is making sure they are even. So let's go ahead and brush it up before we put my hair up. But oh well. Next time. I'm 
like when you're blending, take your time blending. In fact, um, that's a tip. Keep blending. I know that looks like a lot of work because it is. Um, obviously, if I'm not filming it, I would go through it so much faster. But uh, I'm talking and filming at the same time, so. So start like, because this is a light color, I'm okay with like pulling it up towards my brow bone, but not like all the way up, so like, but like really close. So now I feel like I'm okay with how pink this is. Um, in fact, I would make it a little pinker, just for fun, because why not? So, and I'm going to do that with a blush. So, I'm going to go to the Tarte blush palette, and I'm going to take... I'm going to take Fetching, so this one. And I'm going to put that through my creases. Or no, actually, I'm going to take Smashing, sorry. Which is like a little more coral. Um, and I like doing that just because I prefer running whatever blush color I'm going to put on my face into my crease to tie everything together a little bit more. Excuse my hands, I am savage um, when doing anything really, so I have tons of scars. I think I think that's good enough. I think that's enough pink for now. Okay, right. so we're gonna go back in here, and I, I still want grays in, so that's what I'm gonna do. I'm gonna start. I'm gonna go into the cool gray. And by the way, these are different brushes. I keep picking them from next to me, but most of them are the same. These are these are the Anastasia brushes that come into their palettes, and they're probably my favorite brushes. So I'm gonna take the same blending brush and dip it into cool gray which is there you go so like that and i always tap them especially with Lorac pa uh, palettes because they're very soft they're very powdery which makes them like super pigmented but very so in order to avoid any fallout on my face i like to always tap them so i'm just gonna go like so and just like start like going lower so i'm not gonna go as high in the crease anymore okay that's when you start blending into the pink to make it all seem seamless as if it's like going gradually from one color to the next like I'm just taking that gray all over down. I'm not adding any more product or anything. I'm just going lower. And this is still not gonna be like a really dark look or anything. I told you I'm going to Barnes and Noble to study, so I'm. I don't do like heavy makeup in the morning that often. I mean, you do you, boo boo, but like I prefer not to go crazy with the makeup in the morning. People judge me. One important tip is not to put shimmer in the crease. Um, the problem with shimmer in the crease is, first of all, you have more fallout because this is like the eye fold. So like when it folds, like you're going to start having fallout all over your lids, messing up your look, all over your face. Um, and the other thing is it makes your eyes look like they're older than they are. So like it makes you look aged basically. So if you want to avoid that, avoid shimmer in the crease. Always go with matte colors in the crease. In fact, I prefer to start off my look with all the matte shades that I can. And then at the very end, just all over the lid, I will put like a little bit of shimmer or even glitter just to like amp it up. So this eye is darker than this eye, so we're just going to like... 
more. I might use this mirror a little bit. Lord. This is starting to look really, really cute. I'm into it and digging it. So at this point, we're just going to start um, darkening it up a little bit more. So we're just going to go with charcoal. And this is the darkest color we're going to go with. These shades, because they're so pigmented, you just lightly tap. And like, um, I'm not going to start like going into my crease anymore. I'm just going to go like in the outer corner and blend it out to darken it up a little bit. And I mean, this is still a pretty dark look, so if you're not into that, um, you could have stopped at the light gray, and that's it. And, like, just put a little bit of shimmer. But for me, I'm, like, really going with the edgy light a little bit just because of the purple hair, so it's, like, giving me more confidence. <laughs> Um, we're just, this is the final color we're gonna go with, and we're not gonna go with this brush. We're gonna start taking, like, little brushes, so this is an Urban Decay blush, uh, brush, and we're gonna go with the shade Plum, and we're just gonna start, like, taking it into the center of the lid a little bit more. And this is not, like, a purpley purple or anything, this is more, like, a very dark purple, but I dig it. We just tap it on the lid so like very little strokes oh sorry huh. so like tiny strokes like that all right so the final part um would be the shimmer like we've talked about so, hmm, what colors do I want to use? I think I'm going to use a little bit of chrome, a little bit of silver, and in the inner corner we're going to use snow. I think that would look really pretty. So we're going to start off with chrome, and that is going to go all over like the lid, kind of. So we've coated the brush with chrome. Now we're going to take some setting spray to make it a little more intense and to last longer. That was too much, don't do that. And then just like start like going over. And the nice thing is, first of all, this shade has a little bit of a shift, but because you have different shades, so like we had the purple and then the gray, it looks a little bit different. So like the color itself starts shifting even more from one part of the eye to the other, depending on what was the matte base color we had, which is kind of cool, I think. So we're just gonna do the same thing for the second eye. All right, so now that we've got that part done, um, what comes next is brightening up the eye a little bit more just because this is like a lot so first we're gonna start we're gonna go into silver we're gonna do the same thing so we're gonna like get some product on um and i like coating my brushes it's application so. and we're just gonna like look at how bright and intense that is So like we're just gonna go in and in intensify the outer corner of the eye. Like that. And like don't go too overboard with this color just because it's very bright. Um and then finally I'm gonna take snow, which is the very, very white color right here. And we are going to And we're gonna go 
do a little bit. And the fry will, but not too much. If I were you, I would take a beauty blender, like a wet one, and I would just do that. Um, these are the eyes. So the last thing, move on to the face. Um, first thing you do for the face is primer. So I'm using the Smashbox, <clears throat> excuse me, Photo Finish Foundation Primer. So this was like an award, a Lua winner, whatever. Um, it's really good though. It's like really, really good. So comes in a squeezy tube, which is nice. You squeeze just like a tiny dollop. And I like to focus my primer generally, like if it's like a silicone based primer, I like to focus it where my pores are, so on my cheeks and nose, and then like whatever is left in my hands, I can take it to the rest of my face. Focus on pores and whatnot, then you want to go um, towards where your pores are, so like the nose, the cheeks. That's why I usually use more than one primer, so I would use a hydrating one all over my face and then this one. Um, but since I had a sheet mask right before this, I don't need it since my face is very hydrated right now. Like if you touch it, it's really, really nice. So now that we've got that down, <clears throat> I'm losing my voice. It's so sound. So sound. So now that we've done that, so we're going to use our foundation. And I'm going to mix it with a highlighter because my face is very dry and matte. Um, and I like to have it a little bit of highlight. So I'm using the Peter Thomas Roth Clinical Skin Care 24 Karat Pure Luxury Lift and Firm Prism Cream. So it's basically an all-over uh, all over adjust self-adjusting eliminator. It's kind of like a champagne color. Um, another one that I really, really love are the ones from Becca. I have Opal and Moonlight, and they're really, really nice. And Champagne Pop is pretty good too. But like I like liquid eliminators to mix with foundations. So I am going to just, this is the Lancome Tint Idol Ultra 24 Hour Makeup. And this has SPF, <clears throat> which is nice if you're going out in the morning. Um, I don't recommend it for events or anything at night though, because anything with SPF gives you um, a white cast in flashback photos, which you don't want because it makes you look like a ghost and then your entire body, like if you're tan like me especially, then your face looks like a ghost, your body looks warm, it looks weird. So now that we've got like this little concoction, you can also add face oil. Sometimes I do that, but I already have um, vitamin C oil and a hydrating serum on my face, so I don't need any more oils today. But like when my face is like extra dry, especially in the winter, I would mix a little bit of Rose hip oil or argan oil. They're really nice on the foundation with the foundations. So now that we've got like it mixed up looking really nice and pretty, we can just like start dotting it on the face. You can also start picking it up right away with your applicator, whether a beauty blender or the brush. Um, I prefer warming it up um, with my fingers and then I'm gonna leave it just a little bit on my um, hand for now um, just in case we need more and I'm gonna start blending this using the Real Techniques blender okay, the Real Techniques so you don't miss a spot on your face hit your temples so like up to your hair um, make sure if you have done your brows already not to mess your brows up because I have been a victim of this mistake way too many times But if you can see, I have ridiculous dark circles, which the Anastasia palette is going to be here for me for. So I'm just going to pick with the tip of my sponge a little bit of the orange. And that's because I'm tan. If you're not tan, if you're a little, if you have a little bit of a lighter skin tone, you can use um, a lighter highlight or concealer. So like you can use those colors. Anything just like with a little bit of a salmon or orange tint. And depending on how dark skinned you are, then you want a darker color. So, so I'm just gonna go 
and that. And basically like just press it in. Um, I don't like to blend it completely in. I, I know a lot of people do, and it lo looks really beautiful and everything. Um, I don't like to blend it completely in. I just, I like to, like, see the orange peek through. Um, but it's up to you. So now I'm using the Tarte, Sha uh, the Tarte Shape Tape Contour Concealer. Probably the best I've ever tried, so I love it. And it's, like, a huge applicator. Um, I am using a little bit more than I usually would just because I'm using corrector underneath. So I want to make sure I cover it up completely. And because I have ridiculous dark circles, I almost left it mix. So. So. Blend it out, but be very careful around your eyes because you have already done your eyeshadow. Make sure you press it in as much as, I c as you could. And always tap, never drag with a sponge because it will start lifting up the product and moving it around, which you don't want. Especially around your eyes, just because like it's very, very delicate area and it's very hard to fix. So now that we've got that done, um, I will bake. And I usually like don't bake my entire face because I have very dry skin, but I only bake... Um, under my eyes and my smile lines because I don't want my foundation, my concealer to crease. So I'm using the La Mer powder, that's the loose powder, and it's, it's a beautiful powder. Probably the best I've ever tried, which better be since it's a hundred bucks. But, so, and I lightly tap my wet applicator and I'm gonna go under my eyes. And I don't do like a thick layer or anything, especially the I don't need any highlighting or whatever. Um, again, I'm going to the bookstore, so it shouldn't like look like super glam. I just I should look nice if I'm gonna be crying over the LSAT for hours. That's that's my philosophy. So now that we've just got like the powder everywhere, um, the rest of my face, I'm not gonna set it with this powder. Um, I think it's too heavy, so I'm just going to start right away with the poreless powder, and this is what I'm going to like use it to set my cheeks. This is the Too Faced um, Primed and Poreless Translucent Powder. I'm just going to like set everything. It's really good for the pores, but it also, if you use too much of it, it would cause a flashback. So you should really be careful. That's why I, look right, I like the La Mer powder if I'm going out at night, if I have an event, or if I'm going to be taking pictures for whatever reason, because it does not have any flashback effects. So now that my face is set, we're going to go with the uh, bronzer, and I'm using the Hoola bronzer from Benefit. And we're using the Sigma F42, F40, large angled contour brush. And like have a little bit of a fish face to find the right line where you should contour. Like go up to your hairline. Mm -hmm. 
I'm just a little bit. There you go, hairline. Um, since I don't see my little blending brush, I'm gonna use the fan one and contour my nose. So. I normally just use a small eyeshadow blending brush. And then we're just going to take this and go for it. So now that I'm going to go over with the blush, I want something a little more toned down because the eyes are like bam in your face. So I'm gonna go with Prim, which is the one that I used on my in my crease, and mix it with Smashy. And like, I like to go all over the apples on my cheeks first, and then pull it all the way along my contour. So like, all the way up to my hairline, but like, with like, much, much lighter strokes. So, my cheeks would be like, pulled up to lift my face, since I have a really big face. Sad. So, now that we've got that done, we can go with the highlight and I'm not gonna like do like crazy bam in your face highlight because like still again people look at me weird when I go to a bookstore in full glam. So I'm gonna use the Hourglass Ambient Lighting Powder in Luminous Light and it's a really really natural one. I love it. But since I'm still like a highlighting addict, I will spray it with a little bit of um, oops, over decay setting spray just to give it a little bit of an oomph down my nose cheeks upper lip now that we've got all of that done um, it has been about 5 to 10 minutes, so now we can kick off the powder, and I am going to use the same highlight, but without any, like, setting spray or anything on it, and I'm gonna, like, dab my really big fluffy brush in it, knock off the excess, and use it to knock off the powder. Now we're just going to use your we're gonna line our lids and I was gonna I was planning on using black but honestly like I'm not feeling black so I think we is going to do purple so this is the Marc Jacobs I think it's in plum Plumage. So it's in plumage. So it's purple, kind of meshes my hair. So we're gonna go that. And we're gonna like. I try to lightly pull. There we go. 
now that we're done with that, lastly we're gonna mascara. So this is the Dior Show Blackout Waterproof, and it's one of the best mascaras I've ever tried. So. And I really take my time just because this is like a really big brush, and I can easily step myself in the eye. I mean, if you're a normal person, you probably, like, can mascara your eyes really easily, but, like, I'm a dork, so what can I say? I have told myself that I'm not going to use highlighter because I'm going out in the morning and stuff. It was a lie. So I'm going to go with the Anastasia Beverly Hills Highlighting Palette. It's the Glow Kit in Gleam. And I think I'm going to go with Starburst and Crushed Pearl. So I like to like mix them up a little bit. So Starburst and Crushed Pearl. Let me just... Oh my god. Is that pretty? Very pretty. So finally, we're gonna go with our lip color. And I am going to go with, come on, that's too warm. I am going to go with NARS Audacious Lipsticks in Anna. I know it's like this like taupey pink, little bit of purple in it. It's beautiful. And this formula, probably the best lipstick formula I've ever tried in my life. Do you see this? It's like one swipe. It's, I'm super happy with this. So now we're, we're done. Just gonna spray our faces. So just hold it like that. And that's about it. I really hope you guys like this. Um, I know it's still not perfect, the lights are not great, but I am super happy with how this came out and I'm looking forward to doing more. Thanks for watching. Bye!